hello hello hi 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 everyone we're going to wait a couple of minutes until we start with our guest today so for more people to come to join we'll begin about three or four minutes thank you Hope you're doing well today. One more minute and then we'll go on. Okay, so let's go. So hi again, everyone. Uh, today you are here to participate at this Drone and Lasers UAV LiDAR Mapping webinar. We're really pleased to have you on board. I am here with the Yellow Skin team and Aether from the UK. Um, first, before we begin the webinar, we're going to go through a little bit of our skipping, what's important to know about it. So you're muted. You can write any questions you want on, on the right side of the of, of the chat box um, and uh, any questions will be answered at the end of the presentation or via email or directly on the chat if it's uh, if it's an urgent questions you can watch it again um, letting you know that this webinar is recorded for those who missed it or for those you want to share with they will be able to watch it again uh, after the webinar so now i'm going to talk about a little bit of a presenter today so we have john white uh, representing Etha, he's a technical solutions engineer. So hi, John. It's nice to have you. Um, we have Julien, uh, who is the business development uh, manager in uh, Europe, so from Yellow Skin. So hi, Julien. Hello. It's, uh, it's uh, good to have you both together today. So um, what will be a little bit of uh, the agenda? So now we're gonna uh, talk a little bit with Etha about hardware about a little bit of what they're doing, and then we're going to switch to yellow skin. So now I give the mic to John, and I'm really happy to have you both on board. Thank you again. Oh, thank you very much. So yeah, that's one of the best introductions I've ever had. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about Ether, what we do, who we are. Um, so I'm John, I'm the technical solutions engineer. Um, and what we do at Ether is we're a drone solutions company. Uh, so we aim to provide complete services uh, for people looking to implement, adopt, or improve their in-house drone operations. So we cover everything from start to finish um, and as close to turnkey solutions as possible for all things drones. Uh, but yeah, I've been working with um, with Yellowscan for oh, just close to a year and a half now. Um, so we are the ex exclusive UK distributors. Um, we've been working with them as our sort of primary LiDAR provider and um, yeah uh, we've developed a really good working relationship um 
obviously we're going to be putting on a number of demo days which we'll we'll speak about soon where you can see the systems in action um we have services from survey hire to data processing uh, so you can see all of the kit in action in the field in a situation where you know what's going on um and yeah i think we'll speak a little bit more about the upcoming demos at the end uh but yeah essentially we just aim to provide the right tools for the job um obviously drones are a fantastic tool for surveying they can save you time they can save you money uh, and ultimately save you a lot of legwork uh, out on the ground um and we aim to provide all of the support to you know make that adoption and integration as seamless as possible I'm going to hand back to Julian. He's going to go, yep. through, uh, go through a bit about Yellowscan. Thanks, John. Um, I will introduce a bit uh, Yellowscan, uh, our solutions and and product range, um, uh, before uh, you know uh, giving you the floor again uh, for for more technical uh, approach, including the process workflow of Yellowscan. So uh, our mission at Yellowscan is uh, to provide the most integrated solution uh, for UAV lidar mapping. Um, we are uh, uh, yeah, if I can move to the next slide. <clears throat> we are based um, in south of France, um, in Mon uh, five minutes north of Montpellier, basically between Marseille and Spain. Um, the Howard headquarters is there, and we have um, two subsidiaries, one in Japan, in Tokyo, and one in the US in Salt Lake City, with some sales office in Australia and Germany. And of course, we're backed by a network of uh, 35 to 40 uh, distributors and, and reseller network. Okay, so uh, um, before going uh, um, in, in the presentation too far, a reminder about, uh, about LiDAR technology. So LiDAR means light uh, detection and ranging. Um, how does it work? Basically, the, the, the laser sensor, uh, well, the, the, we emit a pulse, a laser pulse, uh, of millions of laser pulse uh, to the ground. Um, and basically what is measured by the sensor is uh, the travel time uh, from the sensor back to the sensor. So, you know, that the, the distance is, is uh, measured by speed multiplied by times divided by two because you get the return trip. And from this distance, you get a, a localization of each point, which makes at the end a, a, a point cloud. Okay, so uh, basically the, the main strengths of LiDAR uh, let's say over photogrammetry is uh, uh, going through vegetation. So it's going uh, in the whole of the canopy. Um, when we emit a pulse, uh, a laser pulse, the, 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 there is a beam divergence. So it's not a line as mentioned on the slide, it's more cone. And this divergence is measured is, uh, in milliradian. So uh, the, the, the beam divergence is uh, one factor which is interesting when you want to, uh, under, uh, to, to evaluate how uh, you can penetrate vegetation because uh, the laser footprint at the ground is bigger if you have a, a, a big uh, laser uh, beam divergence. And what is important as well is that you get echoes or returns from, 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 from the laser. So when you have two echoes, it means that basically uh, you have... Uh, one echo from vegetation for from a leaf for example and one from the ground and when you have five it means that up to five it means that you, are, you get basically five touch points before the the echo is it, the, the laser light is is going back to the sensor so in our product range we have solutions uh, uh offering up to two echo uh, from from up to two echoes until up to five echoes um we'll see that later uh, in more details so what we do offer at Yellowscan um, is a complete uh, ecosystem, a complete solution. So we are not uh, only hardware integrator, we are offering mapping tools, so hardware, uh, LiDAR hardware. Um, we offer as well software um, and we offer services including uh, uh, support. Okay. Um, here are some um, UAV LiDAR integrations. So we are drone agnostic, meaning that we uh, uh, can um, uh, use our LiDAR on a very large set of drones, including multi-rotors, fixed-wing drones, VTOL, uh, fixed-wing, um, helicopter drones, manned aircraft, small, uh, and in including helicopters as well. 
So you have some some uh, ideas here, and of course you can find more UAV or airborne uh, integration on our website. We have a page dedicated uh, to it. Uh, in terms of mapping tools, so <clears throat> here is a current um, uh, a yellow scan lidar uh, portfolio. So I'm not sure you can see. Uh, we have a pointer, but I'll try to drive you through the, this this slide. So on top left, you have a mapper, and then you have mapper plus. So these two systems are uh, using live box scanners. Uh, below you have a surveyor ultra. Uh, which is using Hezai laser scanner and can be compatible with a mobile mapping solution called Fly and Drive. Then you have on top right VX15 and VX20 series using, using Regal Minivox uh, laser scanners. And then you have Explorer, which is using a laser scanners co developed by Yellow Scan for Yellow Scan. Um, so I'll go now more into details um you know explaining what are the, the pros for um each systems to make it more uh, uh understandable for you guys so first is uh, we have a, a mapper which is our entry level solution it's a uh, uh, very compact and lightweight uh, it's using livox uh, uh, horizon laser scanners um what is uh, really great is like it's compatible with the gi skyport uh, compatible with Gram City's 3v3 uh, quick release, so it's very easy to start with um, uh, for LiDAR. So here are some applications, general surveying, uh, forestry, corridor mapping, but of course it depends on what is deliverables um, uh, uh, for, this, for these applications. Uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, think about many more applications. So it's, ca it's compatible with multi-rotors, but it can be put on, on, on fixed wing as well if, if, uh, if needed. Then you have Mapper Plus, which is, uh, let's say, the big brother of Mapper. It's using a Livox Avia scanner, not the Livox Horizon from Mapper. So the, basically, it comes uh, as well with a built-in RGB uh, uh, camera module, like for Mapper previously shown. So I can, if you see my video, here's uh, the, you have uh, both basically the the the, the lasers and 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 the RGB camera in, integrated in a single piece of hardware, so you can uh, collect both data at the, at the same time, meaning in a single flight. It's a bit lighter than than Mapper. You can fly up to 100 meter AGL. Okay, uh, Mapper uh, was rec is recommended at 70 meter AGL to have the best compromise between uh, productivity and, and 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 data quality. It's plug and play as well. Gram C uh, compatible, DG, uh, DJI Skyport compatible, and you can fly uh, fast, uh, really fast with it. Okay, so to 15, 20 meter per second is not uh, an issue because with uh, this Livox scanner you have a, a great point density. Uh, then we move to Surveyor Ultra, which is a 360 degree field of view um, uh, laser scanner based product. Um, so you have a, a very po a high point density and good uh, uh, vegetation penetration. Uh, what is good uh, with this solution is like it's compatible with a fly and drive, which is our mobile mapping solution. So you can fly your drone um, and then you can put it on, on a car. Uh, when you can't fly uh, in certain zone like no fly zone or or you can't map under bridges and so on so this can be put on a car in a fixed wing in a multi rotor as well so here you have the pod of this fly and drive um it's uh, very convenient and and data matches from 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 the mobile mapping uh, and and the uav mapping then we move to vx15 um so uh, using uh, regal minivox one two or three because now you have three version uh it's using apx 15 imu um basically can fly really high and get uh, and you get a very uh, large swath uh, meaning ground coverage you can fly up to 100 110 meter and you get at the ground at this uh, agl 346 meter swath so it's large coverage it's a very good precision system um Okay, so usually surveyors, uh, construction engineering companies are, are are looking into this this product. It's it it fits, of course, uh, multi rotors, but it can be fixed on on large uh, uh, fixed wing uh, as well. And then when we have VX20, which is uh, the same system using Minivox one, two, or three, but with another IMU APX20, so you can fly a bit higher, and um, uh, you have a, a better precision accuracy. 
So all these systems, um, yeah, you have Explorer as well. Sorry, the last one. Um, so um, it's, it's put on an helicopter drone, but it can it can be lifted as well by DJI M300 or an Ace Core Zoe. Um, it's, it has a high accuracy and precision. It can fly up to 200, 300 meter AGL. So this, this is a unique product because it can fly on a drone and fly on a small aircraft, which is uh, very unique in this market. So it's dedicated to mining, uh, power line, uh, or corridor mapping, more generally speaking, civil engineering as well. So you can put uh, on a helicopter drone like here, on an aircraft, small aircraft, on a fixed wing, and on a multi rotor as well. So you have camera options at Yellowscan because we feel that uh, photogrammetry and LiDAR are uh, uh, complementary. So you have this camera module. So here you can see the, the mapper with its RGB camera module. It's a built-in uh, camera module. Sony uh, a sensor with 20.1 megapixel. So it's, uh, it's um, uh, available for mapper, mapper plus and explorer. Then you have single camera option which is possible for Surveyor Ultra and VX series. So we can combine this system with the Sony uh, Alpha 6000 or Sony Alpha 7R. And of course, uh, dual camera option is, is possible as well uh, for, for uh, systems with a 360 degree field of view as well. Okay. And last about the product is the mounting bracket. So for it's mainly designed for um, multi rotors because in fixed wing you don't have this um, these constraints. But we have uh, dedicated mounting for M300 for M600. Uh, when we combine lidar with RGB uh, cameras, we have uh, a mounting for cameras as well to be put on these existing mountings. And for some systems like Mapper, Mapper Plus, and Surveyor Ultra, we are already compatible with DJI Skyport or Grand Secret Release. Okay, so this is uh, part of the hardware uh, um, offering from Yellowscan. Um, now, if there is no question on this topic, I can move um, to the software part uh, because we offer a complete package. So when you buy Yellowscan, you have hardware, but you have as well software and services. So now is the software part. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you then the, the workflow. Um, Inside all our systems, you have an IMU, uh, which is uh, an IMU from Aplanix. So you need to use Postpack, UAV, or MMS if you're doing mobile mapping with Fly and Drive. So this software is basically helping you um, correcting the trajectory. So in the first part of the uh, data processing, you go into Postpack, and the output is a corrected trajectory. Then you need to move to Cloud Station, which is our own um, software developed internally uh, uh, basically this solution is helping you uh, uh, generating uh, your point cloud and visualizing visualizing so basically you can see your point cloud and start to do some processing um, so you have some add-ons strip adjustment which is uh, reducing the um the the gap between one point cloud from another uh, from one flat line to another so basically you are matching better your 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 point cloud from different uh, flight lines um you have then terrain which is uh, allowing you uh, removing vegetation in a few click and you can divide your point cloud in ground and non ground and then you can generate dtm dsm dhm and hill shades okay and if you're flying your lidar with a, a camera module or a camera or a single camera or dual camera you can colorize your point cloud from two colors uh, uh collected by the rgb um uh, by the rgb camera okay so you can colorize the point cloud at the very end of the process so here is the process um basically you have uh, uh, if you go to field uh, under field operation column, you have uh, the LiDAR uh, system, which is put under the drone. John will give you more details about the flight planning before uh, operating, of course, you know. Uh, you have to put the base station uh, in advance, or a physical or uh, virtual base station. Uh, you collect data during the flight, of course. Uh, once you have uh, finished your data collection, you have a Renex file from your base station. You have uh, some uh, flight trajectory file from 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 the IMU okay dot apx dot t zero far, 
004, sorry, and you go into a uh, post pack with Renex and this um, data. Uh, the, the output of a Planix post pack is a corrected trajectory, and then you go into Cloud Station to basically uh, have your uh, trajectory and generate your georeference point cloud. Um, then you can uh, use the photos, of course. Uh, the, oh, uh, now the first first step is to go to strip adjustment to uh, increase the accuracy of your point cloud. Uh, then you go to terrain module um, in in order to uh, uh, generate your DTM, DSM, and and so on. And then at the very end of the process, if you have collected data, uh, photos, um, you can colorize your point cloud. Okay, so this is the general uh, the overview, the big picture of our process workflow. Um, uh, and then the very uh, last part after hardware software is support. So we are offering customer support um, uh, worldwide. Uh, we have a, a, a ticket management system allowing us to be really reactive on handling the, the requests. Um, we have uh, uh, resources available online. So once you've followed our training, you can still connect on your account and 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 and, and check uh, again if you're missing some 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 info, if you forgot something. Um, we are offering as well uh, training flexibilities. Uh, COVID helped uh, a bit, uh, so we have an online platform for training only online if it's possible, even if we. Uh, prefer have have uh, let's say um, on-site training and what is uh, kind of unique in the market is like we offer a one year and limited support for the first year so you don't have to be uh, uh, you, you don't have to you know stay away or shy away from asking us questions because we know that starting lidar is not um, uh, as fast as you want so sometimes you have questions and and, and there is uh, we are here for that. So now I'll I'll give the floor to to John uh, to talk about drones and and the process workflow with lidar, how to plan the flight, and how to use lidar uh, with a drone. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Julian. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to be talking, um, as you said, about the uh, the general process of going from adopting your first drones into operations. Um, and yeah, developing that into a, a full sort of a full workflow. Um, and yeah, just give you a bit of a an overview visualization of what a project will look like. Um, so yeah, I think we had a question come in earlier about the sectors uh, that we're seeing drones operating in. Um, so I just want to touch a little bit on that. We are seeing all of these are gradually adopting drones more and more and more uh, for aerial surveying um, in agriculture, especially. Um, we're seeing a lot of use of aerial LIDAR for terrain mapping, uh, mainly for the vegetation penetration capabilities that LIDAR scanners offer, especially when they're up in the air. Um, we're seeing volumetric analysis of biomass, uh, species um, classification by intensity. Uh, in the mining and aggregate sector, we're seeing a lot of aerial surveying in terms of volumetric analysis being done. Um, similarly, in archaeology, geology, and engineering and mapping, um, again, a lot of it is sort of sub canopy feature detection. Um, so finding out of um, key archeological uh, sites of significance and artifacts, um, we're seeing quite a lot of use cases uh, in terrain mapping. Uh, and yeah, generally it's, it's a really good way of getting a rich data set uh, from that drone up in the air. So it's gonna talk a little bit about the products that we offer. Um, to actually carry these payloads. Um, so essentially the, the drone is just the tool for getting the um, well, getting the payload that you need where you need it. Uh, but there are certain characteristics of these drones that we can essentially analyze and use to select the most appropriate drone for each system. So each one we're gonna be looking at things like flight time, endurance, payload capacity, uh, and a, a good balance of all of those, uh, as well as additional features that are quite sort of desirable. Uh, so starting off with the M300 RTK, uh, this is a really, really versatile sort of industry standard workhorse drone from DJI. Uh, so obviously this is compatible with uh, the mapper range, the surveyor range, uh, the lighter of the two uh, VX series and the Explorer. Um, so this essentially makes it compatible with every stage of um, well, well, every, every product level uh, that Yellowscan are currently offering. Uh, so as a um, as a starting point, 
uh, the M300 obviously offers the ease of use of DJI products. Um, they obviously have a fantastic ecosystem. Uh, their reliability is, um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's to be, uh, to be commended. Um, and additionally, you've got the, uh, the added features like inbuilt and integrated RTK positioning systems, which will obviously give you that craft accuracy, repeatability, um, is with aerial scanning, um, essentially the name of the game is just narrow down all of those possible sources for inaccuracies to enter your scans. Uh, so with RTK positioning of the craft in the air, uh, that's essentially the, the first step um, dealt with. Uh, equally, the R M300 RTK does come with a wide range of products to integrate with it to make surveying um, workflows a lot easier. Um, so it's compatibility with mission planning software, um, dual controller operations for extended operating range, and uh, as, as I mentioned, features like the RTK positioning, uh, collision avoidance systems, and incoming ADSB uh, all make it a really strong use case for the sort of the, the best drone to sort of pick up uh, and start going with. Uh, so there are situations where obviously DJI products are not ideal. Um, so we do have uh, quite a lot regarding sort of component sourcing, uh, backend server location. Um, and for that, generally, we will be talking about systems like the AceCore products. Um, so again, we've recently partnered with AceCore to provide the Zoe and the NOAA. Um, and essentially, these offer really broad, customizable configurations um, to essentially match that drone to your operational needs. Uh, so that's something that we can obviously sit down, have a chat with, analyze what needs need to be fulfilled and configure the drone to that need. Uh, so you've got a number of different control systems that can be used. If manual pilot flight is not essential, they've got a range of different control systems. Um, the modular design uh, means that we can essentially add and stack uh, coaxial motors. Um, to essentially give it that little bit of extra boost if you need a slightly heavier payload, but you still would like the weight consistency uh, of the Zoe. Uh, for the slightly heavier lift drones from Ace Core, um, you would be looking at something like the NOAA. Uh, so again, this features all of the benefits of the Ace Core range, uh, but most importantly, it has the, um, the heavy lift capacity to be able to carry those as uh, higher end systems. Uh, so something like the Vux, um, or VX20 series, um, this will be your, your sort of like your, your go-to drone of choice. Uh, additionally, if you have needs for sort of extended flight endurance, um, then we are also partnered with Quantum Systems. Uh, so they have taken um, essentially the, I believe it's the Avia um, scanner and integrated that into a bespoke payload. Um, so I've been asked by Julian to point out that this payload will not in fact be bright yellow. It will be the same, the same clean white as the rest of the craft. Um, but essentially what you've got here is a clean, inbuilt, long range, wide area LIDAR mapping solution. Um, but essentially the, yeah, the, the only limiting constraint on this one would be the battery life of the system itself. Um, so generally you could look for around about an hour and a half to two hours um, of flight time with, uh, with something like the F90 plus. So again, this would be really useful for things like uh, corridor mapping. We're seeing a lot of these being used uh, in the highways agencies, uh, a lot involved in the planning, rail networks, um, and yeah, uh, general, uh, I think riverbed mapping was uh, another one of the key use cases. So anything where you've got a long flight time and a large area of capture, uh, a fixed wing VTOL platform will be the way to go. Uh, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the actual workflow of using these. So well, obviously once you've selected the appropriate drone for the job, um, there are a few other aspects involved in the mission planning side. Um, so Julian, again, has gone over the, uh, the workflow diagram from Yellowscan. Um, I'm essentially going to show you, show you through the process of planning a mission um, in essentially in real time. Uh, and go through an example of a demo data capture that we have performed uh, with one of the systems. So uh, in the mission planning stage, uh, you want to be thinking about the objectives of the mission. What is the data that you're looking to capture? Uh, what are the outputs that you're looking for? Um, a key consideration will be what can be automated on the capture um, and the whole flight and what needs to be manually flown. 
Uh, there are several considerations involving things like whether you'll need to um, adopt things like terrain following if consistent ground sampling distance is uh, is important. Um, so we offer some smart solutions for terrain following that I'll go through in a moment. Um, but essentially, that will uh, that will keep your captures uh, obviously consistent in their point density, whether you have sort of large changes in gradient uh, across the scene or whether it's a fairly flat one. Um, swath calculation as well is going to be a key part of the actual flight planning. Um, so for this, uh, Yellowscan offer a calculator um, that we use uh, essentially before all the flights to calculate the uh, essentially the coverage and the camera footprint, uh, some of you might be more familiar with, uh, of that laser, laser scanner. Um, so what this will do is that will ensure that the overlaps in the scene are consistent um, and sufficient enough to provide the well, the required overlap for for mapping that uh, that scene with as much detail as possible. Uh, so when it comes to the preparation for the flight, um, the actual mission planning itself, we will offer a few a few solutions for. Um, so in no particular order of preference, uh, we generally most commonly will work with DJI Pilot, uh, UGCS, and Hammer missions. Uh, DJI Pilot being obviously the native. Um, proprietary flight planning software for DJI aircraft, uh, specifically the M300, um, and UGCS and Hammer missions being uh, essentially alternative solutions for uh, products like the NOAA and the ZOE. Um, Quantum Systems will have their own specific one to take into account for the uh, essentially the banking turning patterns um, because they are optimized for flight efficiency. Um, but yeah, generally between UGCS and Hammer missions, um, we've got sufficient control uh, within the actual flight as well to be able to conduct those flights from the mission planner as well. Uh, so things to consider in this stage are things like where your ground control placement is, um, whether that will be captured in the scene. Um, essentially, if you have KML files of the mission area that are already planned out with these points mapped and noted, uh, this is a very useful way of making sure that all of the scene you're looking to capture is within the vision of the system at all times. Cool. So I think I'm going to jump into a, a live demonstration of mission planning. So today uh, we're going to be using UGCS. Um, and yeah, essentially, um, UGCS uh, gives us a, a complete flight control system uh, as well as the mission planning side. Um, we do offer several uh, different sort of levels of packages, but for the LiDAR solutions and the LiDAR toolkit, uh, which I can work very closely with to integrate, um, you'll be looking at an enterprise version, which is what we're going to be using today. So essentially, once we open up um, first stage of mission planning, we're just going to give this a quick name. So we'll call this demo. Uh, we're going to be using um, a predetermined uh, profile for the M300 RTK today. Um, so what this takes into account is things like the battery life, the parameters of the craft, the wind resistance, uh, and essentially provides the system with all of the necessary information to be able to accurately replicate and operate the M300 um, either by plugging the controller in or connecting to the same Wi-Fi network. So this is our mission planning view. Uh, so we've got a wide selection of maps that you can uh, overlay uh, if you have any sort of API tokens for any uh, geo server based maps. Uh, we can add these into the scene. Um, but you'll see that this does model all of the elevations uh, currently, I believe, based off of the DEFRA um, sound models. That's really good timing. Just wait for the fire alarm to stop going off and hope that that is just a drill. It had to happen today. It had to. It had to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no more webinars on Tuesdays. That's That's been determined. Um, but right, yeah. Um, I think easiest way to get an idea of how the mission mission planning workflow goes is just to see it in place. Uh, so we can automate the entire process from start to finish. Um, so we have a number of predefined patterns on the left-hand side here. Uh, all of these have their own parameters to tell the craft how to behave on each particular action type. So for a takeoff zone, we're just going to double click. And you'll see that it's created this pinpoint here on the map um, in 3D space. 
uh, so we can visualize that elevation. Um, one additional feature that is worth noting is the import of um, laser scan data into this platform. So if you have scenes that you're mapping that are changing over time, and you um, want to enable essentially a another layer of safety factor, uh, collision avoidance, um, you can load updated elevation models into uh, this program and it will essentially distort this map view to overlay it onto that 3D model to make sure that if you have sort of any sort of facade sensitive flights or any morphing or changing topology or tree lines, uh, that the system is not gonna try and fly it into those. Uh, so that has a significant safety factor to drone operations. So once we've taken off, um, the drone is going to ascend at five meters per second to an altitude of 50 meters. Um, with the yellow skin systems, if you're using a, a plug-in camera module, uh, this will uh, start triggering the camera by default at 50 meters. So essentially you can maneuver that craft into position uh, and not end up wasting space on your SD card. So it's a nice uh, efficiency tool for that. So once we've ascended to our, essentially our operating altitude, um, we can perform a calibration pattern. Um, so those of you that are familiar with IMU calibrations, uh, this is just a flight pattern that um, essentially will calibrate the IMU in flight. Um, and yeah, there's, there's tools to automate this process. Um, unlike some systems um, that require a calibration pattern every 100 uh, seconds of operation or every defined distance away, um, this system only requires a calibration at the start and the end of every flight, um, ex with the exception of corridor mapping missions, um, where you have a significantly extended range uh, until the next calibration is necessary. So once the IMU calibration has occurred, um, we can select a an area for our mission to uh, to happen in. Um, so I'm going to just double click to create a capture area around our field of interest here. Um, this happens to be our vineyard demo location. So anyone that happens to be um, interested in in coming and having a product demo of any of the OSCAM products will be treated to this wonderful vineyard. Uh, as a, uh, as, a, as a really good location to host. Um, and yeah, you'll see now that the, the this um, grid has been populated with a single pattern. Um, this is, is a really good opportunity to show you how missions change uh, with varying parameters. Uh, so with most of these systems, um, depending on the point density that you're after, um, we'd be looking at a 70 meter altitude flight. Uh, so you'll see that by raising the altitude by 20 meters, uh, we've drastically reduced the number of passes uh, and lines that we need. Because uh, obviously the higher up you go, the wider your swath is. Uh, this will all be uh, taken into account in the calculations uh, with any of the tools provided. Um, so this is preset to the Mapper Plus profile. Um, so you'll see that we've got a field of view option on the left-hand side here set to 72 degrees. Um, if we were to, for example, say use the Surveyor Ultra with a 360 degree field of view, you would have a 120 degree effective ground coverage of that scanner. Um, and you'll see, once I hit enter, it's going to recalculate this flight path. Um, and you'll see it has drastically reduced our, um, our mission operating time for that wider coverage at the same altitude um, and not sacrificing any point density. Uh, so if we hit show elevation on this profile, we can see um, predictions for the distance covered. Um, we get an elevation profile of the scene, so it is actively following the terrain at the moment. Um, we also get information regarding the duration of the flight, which is really important for your considerations of battery life. Um, and additionally, we've got uh, key information here regarding number of waypoints, so you can check those off as your drone's flying. Um, but yeah, essentially that, that's your, your overview panel for the mission. So there are a number of parameters uh, as well as this that we can change to ease, um, ease mission planning and aid the, um, aid the data capture. So on this particular scene, I think we're looking at around about 350 by 350 meters. Um, and you'll see that this is estimated to take us six minutes at the moment. So that's a really quick, really dense data capture. Um, and essentially we can speed this up even more if we want to. Um, so 
yeah, with the, with the HSI sensors, um, a flight speed of 10 meters per second um, is perfectly acceptable for achieving a really high point cloud density. You'll see by doubling the flight speed, we've halved the flight duration. Um, we can also change the um, horizontal overlap in between the scene as well. Um, so we can set this to say 50%, and then each um, each line of that flight is then going to be aligned uh, side by side with uh, each other part. And we'll see by decreasing that amount of overlap, um, we've decreased the flight time again. Uh, we can also choose between things like single or double grid. So if uh, detection of occluded features, so facades is important, or for example, trees, um, sub canopy, uh, enabling double grid uh, will essentially give us um, another layer of um, sort of information, another opportunity for the, the laser beam to hit that particular feature of interest. Um, and yeah, a, a double flight pattern is what you will see in the uh, demo data set that I'll be going over uh, in a moment from this exact flight path. So the demo that I'll be going through was performed on the map of plus. So I'm going to set that back to 72 uh, degrees. Um, and essentially, this is uh, pretty much all of the considerations for the actual mission um, flight plan itself. So we know the operating altitude. Um, we know what it's going to be doing at every point of the way. So once everything is all set, the craft is on the ground, perform free flight safety checks. Uh, you've obviously checked the area. You've got a pilot and spotter set up, base stations recording data. You're ready to hit the yellow button on the scanner, upload the mission, and hit start. So. What you'll see um, is the mission is now locked. It's calculating. Um, we have now uploaded. Uh, we can arm the craft. And if we hit auto mode, oh, that's good. Just going to stop that for a second because that's very loud. Um, essentially, the, yeah, the emulator is not loaded up in the right place on this occasion. Um, but essentially, we can hit upload. Uh, this mission flight path will be sent to the drone. Hit arm, the propellers will start spinning up. Uh, hit auto mode, and it will execute uh, this mission uh, from start to finish. Um, we can go ahead and finish up and add a landing zone as well uh, after we perform the final calibration of the flight. Uh, and once the drone's landed, press the yellow button again to initiate the storage of those, uh, those data files and captures. Um, we'll be ready to move into Cloud Station. So obviously, once you've uh, stored all of the data onto the um, onto the inbuilt USB sticks and SD cards, uh, they can be taken out of the scanner, plugged straight into Cloud Station, and you're able to get this visualization of the scene uh, within three to four minutes of landing your drone. So what this does is saves a lot of time and a lot of wasted effort of going out to a site, um, performing a capture, getting back into the office, offloading all of the data and then finding out the either something occluded the sensor when you were flying, uh, any issues with the kit or the actual capture area wasn't correct. And then you have to waste all of this time and effort remobilizing going back out to the site. With Cloud Station, you're able to just plug the USB stick straight into a laptop, double click on the created project file, um, and you'll be greeted with a, a really quick visualization of the scene as it was captured. Um, so as far as validation of your data goes, um, yeah, really useful, saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, you'll see the trajectory with our calibration patterns is overlaid over the top of it. So we can segment that flight down into strips and see exactly where each point is being generated from. Um, so we've got a number of visualization options that we can go through. Um, if we go into color by strip, you'll see each of the points has been colorized according to the um, flight line that it was captured in. Uh, so this is really useful for assessing the, um, the accuracy of the alignment of each of those strips. Um, so within the strip adjustment module, um, you'll see, obviously, this is um, essentially just a couple of parameters. Um, robust is generally what we'll stick with, um, but precise is, is much more uh, in terms of things like corridor mapping, where you have a single point of alignment. 
Um, for ground control points, this is also where you will import your known coordinates as a CSV file. Um, and these will be easy to visualize within the scene within either the colorized point cloud or as um, as intensity view, because obviously if you're using checker markers, uh, that black and that white contrast will show up really clearly in the point cloud. Um, so once strip adjustment has been performed, it will go through several layers uh, and iterations of this. Um, it will be brought up with a full report as to exactly what has been changed on the accuracies. Um, so in terms of uh, your, your, sort of your survey workflow, um, you'll be given a full GNSS um, and IMU report from the APX system uh, when we process the trajectory, but that in itself could be an entire webinar. So we'll speed run through that today. Um, but essentially you have here um, a, a key point of accountability um, and auditability in your survey workflows. Um, so if there are any sort of inaccuracies within the scene that you've detected, uh, this is one of the, the key documents that you can refer back to. Cool. So once we've adjusted the, um, the scene, um, we can then go back into it. Um, you'll see we're visualizing by uh, RGB elevation. Um, so this in itself is a really powerful tool for visualization. Um, so if there are particular topographical features, that we want to highlight and identify. Uh, visualizing them uh, is as simple as moving a slider. So we've got the ability to really hone in on uh, all of the um, all of the sort of subsurface features that we can detect underneath the scanner, uh, underneath the canopy. Sorry. Um, and yeah, as a visualization tool, really quick, really simple, really powerful, um, and a really useful way of validating the data set as well. So. Within Classation, we'd also have um, a couple of useful tools to use. Um, so we have a cross-sectional analysis tool where we can take a slice across this whole scene uh, and visualize our point cloud um, in, in cross-sectional view. Uh, so this is a test to the essentially all of the data that we've been able to capture beneath the canopy of this tree line. Um, so within a few minutes of flight and 10, 15 minutes of processing, um, we're able to take accurate measurements um, of subcanopy features. Um, this is really useful for obviously data validation as well. If you have no measurements on site, um, then you can obviously measure against those. If you have existing surveys, um, you can, it's obviously really useful for um, essentially visualizing the accuracies and the precision of the scan as well. Uh, so you can see in this 20 centimeter cross section, uh, we've got a really, yeah, really tight grouping. Uh, the strip adjustment's done its job. Um, and if we go into strip view, we'll see that all of these uh, adjustments and alignments have, have done their job. And we have a nice, clean, precise, and accurate point cloud. So additionally, um, once we've completed the uh, strip adjustment, uh, we've also got the option to use the terrain tool to perform a rudimentary classification. So as Julie mentioned earlier, uh, this is useful for um, essentially stripping away all of the vegetation and uh, man-made artifacts from the scene, uh, giving us a raw digital terrain model to work with. Um, and again, this visualization tool means that we can adjust the scale of that scene uh, accordingly. Um, and yeah, for for about maybe 20, 30 minutes of processing, um, we've got a full workable, completely exportable um, digital terrain model that, you know, in, in this case, we're looking at near, I think, between one and three centimeters of accuracy, of inaccuracy from, uh, from the strip adjustment report. So this cross-section tool, again, uh, we can obviously drag out the range that it's sampling from uh, and visualize exactly what has been uh, classified out of that scene. So everything that it's, it's classified out has been shown in orange. Um, so we've got some vegetation here, the top line of the canopy, uh, and obviously all of the building has been filtered out as well, giving us a, a bare earth footprint. So again, once we've um, obviously gone through all of that processing, an additional tool that we can use is the colorization module. Um, so as Julie mentioned earlier, this can be done with either the photos or a um, third-party calculated author mosaic, I believe. Um, and yeah, essentially once you've loaded up um, all of the 
photo imagery, um, correlated it with the recorded shutter actuations in your uh, trajectory processing. Uh, we can visualize the scene in full color um, with, uh, yeah, around about half an hour's worth of processing. So once we've finished up with all of the um, raw processing that's necessary, um, then we're essentially ready to export. So we've got a number of options to export. Um, with this, we can either export the point cloud as a LAS file, um, either standard or zipped. Um, we can choose to export specific strips only. Uh, so for example, if we want to filter out any of the um, specific sections of the capture that aren't useful or we want to save data to transfer time then we can obviously export in certain sections and areas we can choose to export the ground only so this will export everything uh, that it has rendered into this uh, terrain model and additionally we can export into uh, surface models terrain models and height models of the scene as well uh, which can be exported um, into a wide variety of uh, coordinate transformations, uh, coordinate reference systems. Um, and yeah, essentially that gives us an output that is ready to drag and drop into all of your regular mapping or processing workflows. Um, so you can see here an example of um, essentially what's possible with some of the mapper outputs. Um, so this is just a quick map that's been generated off that scene uh, where we've got um, essentially the hill shaded surface model overlaid on top of a contoured uh, digital terrain model. Um, and total processing time for this whole sequence um, from start to finish um, was around about an hour. Um, and that, that is a, a complete um, essentially turnkey solution from start to finish of pressing the yellow button with the drone um, and ending up with your workable survey grade output. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, and yeah, essentially that concludes um, my section uh, on the mission planning, what mission operations look like using yellow scan systems, uh, and essentially just how easy it is to obtain survey grade outputs uh, from these systems. And yeah, hopefully that was um, a useful, useful exercise. Um, well, I think we're now going to go into uh, a Q and A session, so I will hand back over to Morgan. Thank you, John. Um, please just write down your questions. Uh, this was uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation with UGCS and uh, and Cloud Station. I have been writing down stuff about like the fact that UGCS will be as well a lot of majority presenting and doing a workshop. If you want to have more. Um, if you have more questions regarding mission planning, we'll have as well John uh, with us and Julian. Uh, so please do not hesitate to, to register now for this event. But in the meantime, there's going to be some demos. Um, uh, maybe you want to talk about it, John. You have some demos next week, I think, uh, in England. Um, yep, so we do have several uh, demo days coming up. Obviously, they are all weather dependent, but all of the information will be available on uh, the Ether website. Um, if you follow us on LinkedIn or any of our social media, um, we will be uh, obviously announcing all of those dates, locations, times. We'll be announcing sign up information as well. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, anyone that's interested uh, in attending one of those demos, see a live presentation, or even have us come out to site to perform a data capture for you so you can see the data in context to your own workflows, um, it, yeah, drop me an email, get in touch, um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll open up a dialogue. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. It's really nice to have some uh, some feedback. Uh, any any questions? Maybe we'll uh, stay um, connected for five more yep. minutes. If you can add anything, Julia, maybe. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to to have you all connected. I mean, we, this time we had like people from thirty different countries uh, connected, so it was a, a pleasure to 
uh, to see this interest in um, our our solutions and and um, a SaaS solutions as well. So um, yeah, of course, if you have no question at the moment, you can still drop us uh, an email and and we'll reply uh, uh, to you uh, as app. Um, lidar for drone. Maybe we can we can talk a bit about lidar for drone. So time people are maybe writing some questions on the chat box. Uh, Morgan. Yes, so a letter for drone will be held June 13th to 14th, just after ESPRS in Nice will be in Montpellier. Uh, this uh, event gather our customers that will be sharing success stories uh, with what they've done with their yellow scan LiDAR, but as well we'll be talking about the uh, uh, cloud station uh, post pack with the Planix, uh, mission planning with G U UGCS, but as well, we'll be doing uh, two to three demos with our current products. So you'll be able to, to see how, it, uh, how our cloud session works when you are in the field and out of the field. Um, what else? We'll be celebrating our 10th year anniversary. So it's quite exciting, which means Birthday that we have cake. a cake. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and some surprises uh, expected during this uh, these two days. So it's uh, for us. It's, qu it's quite an important meeting. Uh, the full team is going to be there, and uh, of Yellow Scan, and uh, and and the, the venue is uh, is quite amazing. It's uh, so uh, we hope to see you there, and uh, we hope uh, for you to discover more the team and uh, and our distributors on site. So I think now we have one question from Olaf. Uh, which mission planning software can be used for A-score drones? Um, yeah, I'll take that one. So for A-score, you would be looking at uh, UGCS. I will double check as to whether Hammer Missions does support the A-score systems. Um, but yeah, I, I know for a fact the A-score will, uh, um, yeah, that will work with UGCS. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald, for your uh, kind of uh, message too. I'm sure John will be happy to be in contact with you too. Um, maybe one more minute. Uh, well, I guess we can call it a day. Uh, people will, have been, will be having lunch right now. Uh, so enjoy your day or morning or all afternoon night. All or night, night. You know, and, yeah. <laughs> enjoy the replay as well <laughs> um well we'll be hope hope talking to you soon thank you for answering the polls it was really nice to have your feedback as well during the polls and again this webinar is recorded uh you can share it and uh and i wish you an excellent uh, day and thank you for julian john emily who was there as well um in the background to be able to 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 moderate everything and uh and we wish you a really pleasant day thank you guys thank, thank you. you everyone bye -bye. Thank you very much. yeah see you bye see you soon bye bye